Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start right off the top. Um, this is going to be a quick tutorial. It's basically going to show you a couple of the ways you can use Photoshop to adjust your photos and some of the basics so you can have fun playing around with the little bit that you learn here if you don't already know some. Um, and if people like this tutorial, I'll probably go into a little bit more depth about what we're doing. Um, anyways, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to layer and I'm going to duplicate the layer because it's always good to have a copy of your image in the back in case you fuck up, you can always throw it away. Um, so what I'm going to do, what I want to do is uh, desaturate the image, but I'm not going to do the typical um, desaturate, which you can do, but it's going to take away from the actual contrast in the image and my computer is running a little bit slow due to the fact that I'm recording this. Um, but I apologize for that ahead of time. So you can see that the contrast isn't that great in the image. Um, the sky is very blanched out and there's good detail here, but that's not what we're looking for. I want to have most of the focal point around this bike area here. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that with Control Z, one of the few shortcuts that I do know in Photoshop. Um, and I'm going to come up here to Image Adjustments, Channel Mixer. Um, channel Mixer allows you to play with basically the channels in the image, your red channels, your green channels, and your blue channels, but we're not worried about that right now. We're going to go ahead and click the monochrome, turn that on, and now as you can see we've desaturated the image again. It's very over contrast, but we're going to fix that using the uh, channel sliders here. So we're going to turn the red down to about negative 50. We're going to go ahead and turn the green down to about negative 50 as well. And then, I know it looks black, but what we're going to do is turn the blue up. Um, so we get a nice bit of contrast in the image. See, and you can already see the difference between desaturate and this technique is obviously a lot better, a lot more professional looking. So now that we've done this, it looks good, but I still want to bring out a little bit more of the shadow in this area here, because like I say, I want the focal point to be on this bike. So I'm going to go ahead over here to adjustments, choose curves, and you can just pull this down here, and that'll bring out the darks in the, in the image. Um, bring this up a little bit just to get the lights back in there a little bit stronger because we don't want to lose the, the sign. That looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to say OK. Um, and so far it looks so good. Uh, I want to add a color tone to this image. There's a couple ways to do that, but since I do not have a director's account and I have to be quick with my tutorial, I'm going to go over here to adjustments and just choose hue and saturation. Now with the black and white image, if I drag the hue, I'm not going to get any color change. So what you have to do is click over here on the colorize, and now that gives me a colorize overlay and basically turns it to a solid color. So what I'm looking for is a sepia tone, but I want it to be kind of a darkish brown, and I don't want it to be so full, so I'm going to turn the saturation down on it quite a bit. I just want to have a nice little bit of overlay. Instead of a black and white, I want it to have that kind of older look. Um, so now what do I do in my photography anyways with an image like this? I would add a rough overlay, let's say, to the image because I want to have that feel of, I don't know, I just want to have a feeling to the image. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this texture that I already have open conveniently. Uh, this isn't my image, by the way. This is a stock image on DeviantArt. And if you're, just, if you're not doing anything professional, you're doing it for your own benefit, you're more than welcome to use many of the stocks on DeviantArt. Um, each artist has rules that are listed, but I'm not doing anything commercial here, and I'm sure that <clears throat> the artist that I got this from would not mind me using it for a tutorial. Um, I don't actually use DeviantArt anymore, but it's a good place to get stock photos and things. Um, most of the time you want to make sure that your resolutions on your photos are close to the same, or at least both have a high pixelation but um, we're not too worried about that right now because this is just a quick tutorial and I'm not going to be bothered with it. So I'm going to go ahead and close the background image. And now you can see this layer is covering my photo and this is where our um, image properties come into play. So you have all of these different options here which will all do different things. If I was to choose screen it will really brighten up the picture, take away from the contrast, you'll see more of the whites in the image. If I was to go to multiply that's really going to darken it up. And so what we're going to go for is something of a soft light, because that leaves some of the darks and some of the lights, but nothing too drastic. And I would say to turn down the opacity a bit, you can play with that, but I kind of like the way that looks right now. 
Actually, it almost looks a little bit better with the opacity turned down. Um, I'm going to add, just so we don't lose completely the detail in that, I'm going to add some curves just to the background layer. This is where curves come in good to play with. It just gives you a, another option, another way to touch up the image. So there you go. And uh, like you can see, that wasn't too long. We totally changed the image from a colored image to something that looks a lot better than what we started with. Um, go ahead and zoom out so you can get a better feel for it. I always like to kind of give it a, a zoom out so I can see the full picture in my... But yeah, that looks not too bad to me. I'm going to give a special thanks to Random Burn for giving me the software. Um, that was a big help. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and sign this because it's a Maddie Dub production and uh, we'll call it quits. Yeah.